you don't have one of them, you're just not going to sleep at night. Um, or you're going to you're going to blink, go take a job, and lose focus. So yeah, you end up needing a bit more money than you think you do. So the, the, you end up having to talk and think about bigger numbers. Um, frankly, over the course of those four years, I made a bit more than I would have made if I'd done full time gigs. I made more, but not a whole lot more. Um, but the really nice thing about it, and the reason I recommend, that if it's for you, that you at least try it, is that it it, it, it separates your time from your from your income, and that's the key. Is that my time? It didn't matter how much time I put into it. So if I I took six months off once, and the business didn't skip a beat, business just cruised on at the same level. I just took six months off, remodeled part of my basement. I was sick of coding; it had been too long, and it didn't change the business at all. The business didn't even care. Um, eventually. Lack of attention to it, I think, probably was part of causing it to, to decline. But um, taking that hourly connection away is really, really nice. And so the biggest win is actually the freedom. And that's what I would want back. Like, the money was good, but I really just want the freedom. I want to be able to just do whatever the heck I want to every day, work on whatever projects I want to, and just have that ultimate flexibility. Because I, I didn't have a schedule that I ever wanted. Um, and that's great if you, if, if, but I had to have the discipline to have my own office hours every day. So I did maintain that. But within that framework, I could be really, really flexible. Um, so I'm a huge, huge fan of that. And I've got to get back to it somehow. I just don't know how to do it. Um, so I had a couple notes here on. On failure. So, what really ran us into the ground really started with um, a remodel. So, we have a pretty cheap house, wife and I, and we wanted to upgrade it because it, it was never been touched. It was original, um, it needed some love. And so, we took on this remodel. And I took out a home equity loan to prepare for the remodel. I had a feel, you know, way, a plan to do this. The remodel spiraled out of control. It ended up costing twice as much as the loan I'd taken out. I was out all this money. I had to pay off this loan. I started taking all this contract work. It was incredibly stressful for my family. My wife was not happy. Um, and that really, really distracted us from the business. It distracted my wife from the business and distracted me from everything. <clears throat> and that's where we really saw, saw it start to, start to tail off. And in that process, we burned through all that runway. All the runway I've been hanging on to just started to burn with the remodel. Um, and and as, the trend, as the, the trends are still you know, dropping a bit too, and so that, that I fell back to plan B, which was contract. And that worked for about six months. I was able to get a contract work to hang on. But then, like, the problem with contract work, one client drops you. You can be out of, out of business. And that happened. And I realized late 2017, if I didn't have a job in a month, I was going to be selling stuff. So I lined up a job. That's the beautiful thing about software, is you can line up a job. And it takes about a month. So I just really quickly got a job. Um, and I think that's a huge thing for our industry, the fact that we can get jobs so readily makes taking these risks a lot more reasonable. There are a lot of industries where it takes so long to get a job, you can't take these kinds of risks. But our, like my plan C is actually most people's plan A. Like it's a plan A, actually. It's just not the exact one I want. Um, <coughs> so yeah, also don't try to get a job just in a month. That's a bad thing to do because you just take the first job that's given to you and you don't shop around enough and that's, that's a whole other problem. But, yeah. So, got a few conclusions. One is don't quit your job. <laughs> Two is, if, this, if the situation is just right, you have to quit your job just to find out what it's like to do it. Because you're going to learn a lot. But you don't, you're not going to learn enough, you're not going to learn 
is much too you quit your job. The moment you quit your job and you're off on your own, you start learning so much, so fast. It's just like you're thrown in the deep end. I became a much better programmer. Like over those four years, I had no one to ask for help. My server stuff went down. I made mistakes. I just fixed it. And like sometimes that involved reading a lot of other people's source code and sitting in a room for you know days at a time until I got it fixed. Because I'm not making sales till it's fixed, so I got to sit in this room until it's fixed, and there's no one else to talk to about it. Um, and that. It, that really grew me up a lot. Um, and gave me the confidence that I now spin up apps and projects all the time. So my, I spend my four hours every morning spinning up projects. I've got a bunch of different little apps and things I've, I've spun up and worked on, and businesses I've sort of dabbled with, done a bunch of Firebase consulting. Um, it's given me a lot of confidence in that. But yeah, so I learned a whole lot. It was really like a, it was, it was a really good experience. Um, yeah, but have backup plans. And the other upside is when you get that freedom, you have to choose how you're going to use it really carefully. Um, you can descend into the pit of despair and just waste your time and waste your life and not do anything with it. And that's I kind of did that for a little bit, and I realized this is not this is not a good trajectory to be on. Um, I started working out. And then that became obsessive, and I started spending a lot of time biking, lifting weights. Um, I started going to Firebase events, uh, and just doing a lot of other things to get me out of the house. Because you just gotta, when you get the freedom, you have to use it really well, or it will eat you alive. Um, so I've picked up a lot of really good habits once I finally kicked myself out of that that rut, and. I'm doing my best to hang on to them still. But the, the, the thing is, you, you don't have to quit your job, you don't have to go into that rut to learn the habits. That's just what I had to do. You can just pick those habits up on your own, which is probably the right way to pull it off. Anyway. <coughs> I've, got, I've got some time for questions. Let me show you some stuff. Yeah? With your finance background, have you ever looked back at your how business game finance? <laughs> Not even once. <laughs> I torched that plan in 2009. <laughs> yeah. Besides Firebase, what's your go to snack for a new app? I mean, you know, the web and the mobile and JavaScript, PWS. I like PWS. And what, uh, what other? I use Next, Next.js, uh -huh. Next.js, which is React, along with. Um, on top of Firebase. And I use as much Firebase as I possibly can. And what kind of UI? Um, I use Material. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. And you, all your stuff ends up looking a little googly, but you can do worse. <laughs> yeah, and, and like, I can show you what calligraphy looks like. So I guess what calligraphy looks like. This is all material. Actually, not like very lightly scanned. Very lightly 